Uh, so thank you all for coming to the final presentation of this afternoon, uh, which is by uh, Anne uh, Guidon. I, I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. Guidon. <laughs> Guidon. Uh, and I see also the TU Delft is involved in this uh, project and of course Cosmonio. Um, this is about deep learning for surgical um, applications, surgical face recognition using laparoscopic videos. So we're very interested to see how uh, AI can play a role there. So Anneke, it's, uh, the screen is yours. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, hello, everybody. Um, yeah, we're going actually to the to the operating rooms, a bit different topic than the previous talks. Um, yeah, as said, I said, I worked on this project um, um, during my training to become a medical physicist in a Sparna Gasthuis. And uh, I worked together with the Technical University in Delft, where I did my PhD before, and with Cosmonio. Um, uh, so I think we started this project two and a half years ago, something like that. Um, so, yeah. Here we go. Um, it's uh, the <laughs> far goal is uh, about the operating room planning. Uh, so let me introduce you a little bit on how it goes currently. Um, our planning is, is mostly based on um, average surgery durations, but there's a large variation in these durations in, in, in practice. Um, what we see um, for two surgeries where we work on, the laparoscopic cholecystectomy, which is super difficult to say, <laughs> gallbladder surgery. Uh, the mean duration is 70 minutes uh, with a standard deviation of 26 minutes. So that means that almost a third is, or, um, is even variating more from, uh, from the um, uh, average than 26 minutes. So you see that there is really large variation. The same counts for the hysterectomy, the other type of surgery we worked on, with an average of 107 minutes uh, and a standard deviation of 33 minutes. So that shows that it's quite difficult to estimate these times preoperatively. Um, so what do we need in a perfect future is uh, to monitor the progress of the procedures automatically. That means no interruption of the surgical process to ask how far they are and how it goes, no calls, etc. And no additional work, so no additional registration for the OR nurses. Um, what we would like also is an objective estimation of the remaining surgical duration, because now we are all uh, they're all working with a um, uh, quite subjective estimation of the OR team themselves. Um, and um, we would like, of course, to optimize the daily OR planning with, with this information. Um, yeah, it has to load. Let me see, it's a bit strange. Just checking if I missed one. Yes, I missed one. Okay, we're here. Um, so we are in this study, we look to endoscopic videos. Um, that These are the videos that are used to, to perform a surgery on a minimal invasive manner. Um, it's a, a great source of information. Um, yeah, because you, you can follow what's happening, uh, obviously. Uh, so we use this source of information to recognize the surgical faces. And we use deep learning to retrieve this information automatically. So here you see the images that, that we work with. Uh, this is a gallbladder surgery. And uh, when you're used to this surgery, to, to if you know the surgery, you can, um, yeah, Really get a lot of information. You you can see uh, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but here you can see clips. You can see that the gallbladder is retrieved. So um, um, yeah, you can see a uh, yeah you can see a lot from it. So the aim of this study is um, um, to apply deep learning techniques on a new set of endoscopic videos and to assess the feasibility of the technique in medical practice. Um, in terms of the performance of the, of the automatic recognition, the scalability of the technique, and um, also in terms of practical considerations. 
um, the material methods now. Uh, we use a data set of 33 cholecystectomies or the gallbladders and 35 hysterectomies that are the uh, uterus removal surgery. Um, here you can see in the table the both surgeries and which instruments are used um, during the surgeries. And in the next slide, you see the different surgical phases that we defined together with the surgeons. Um, the cholecystomy has seven phases and the hysterectomy eight. And um, bleeding has been defined as an additional phase if you have a, a strong bleeding during surgery. Um, well, we annot annotated all the videos at one, frames, uh, fr one frame per second uh, using news, and that you already uh, uh, know right now. Um, so you see one, one frame of the video with all the labels of the different instruments that are in the image and uh, the phase um, in which uh, the surgical phase in which it is. And then you can click to the next frame and go on. Um, well, after the annotation process, uh, we started training of the neural network. For that, uh, we didn't use any information about characteristic of the patients or characteristics of, of the OR team. And we didn't use any temporal information about the progress of the procedure. So really only the images and labels that we annotated. Um, we made um, subsets, five random splits for both procedures. So we had a, a training subset of 24, 26 videos and a validation subset of nine videos. And um, yeah, after that, the automatic recognition of the surgical tools and the faces uh, was done. And after that, we did a temporal smoothing on the face recognition. And I will show that um, in, in a minute, uh, so it will <laughs> be more clear. And after that, the performance assessment uh, in terms of precision and recall. So here are the results um, for the performance assessment for the cholecystectomy. Um, you can see the tools and the recognition of the tools. Um, on average, a weighted average, we are um, around 0 0.9, 0 0.8. Uh, but if you look into um, uh, into more details, you can see, for instance, the grasper shows really good results but the drain very low, almost zero. And uh, the same counts for the hysterectomies. You have some, uh, almost the same averages, um, weighted averages, and uh, you see difference in the, um, in the oh, um, sorry, there was a message, I'm a bit lost. <laughs> so the grass are pretty high uh, results, but we also have some tools that are very low. You see the bag here, 0 0.00, so I <laughs> didn't recognize it. Um, the one that really showed very low results were instruments that were used in only a few frames. So it was very difficult for the system to, to, yeah, to be trained on it and to recognize it. Now we go to um, the performance uh, assessment of the faces. Um, the results are a bit lower. They are about 0 0.8, a bit lower than 0 0.8 for both surgeries. Uh, here again, you see differences within uh, the faces. For the cholecystectomy, uh, you see um, good results for, for instance, preparation and dissection and lower results for closing and deflation, which is a very, very short phase at the end. Um, and the same counts for, uh, for the hysterectomy. Oh, I need to use this one, sorry. Uh, here you see the temporal smoothing that I was talking about. Um, you see actually on the left side um, in red, what was annotated as phase. So first phase, second, or zero, one, et cetera. And in blue, what was predicted by the system, or what was recognized by the system. And you see that it's, um, yeah, it switches a lot within the, um, uh, between phases. This looks a lot, but it's of course very, yeah, uh, zoomed out. Um, so we smoothed it, uh, we made a smoothing about uh, 20 to 30 frames and, 
uh, chose the, the yeah the mean phase of this um, within this frame, and um, yeah, yeah, as you can see, that helps a lot for the phase recognition. And here another results, another example of the other surgery. You can see also that it gets much more clear. Um, well, the loading of my slides are not going very well. Let's try the next one and back. Okay, here we go. And then um, some results about the scalability of this method. What we did here is that um, uh, we looked at the performance of a network that is trained on the one surgery. Um, but that was used for the other procedure. Uh, for that, we tested only the tool recognitions of the tools that are present in both surgeries. There were these four tools. And you see that the results are a bit lower than they were on the network that was trained on, on the same surgery that it was tested on. Um, well, as we expected, actually, the grass pair was still, yeah, yeah, it looks the same, so still pretty good results. Um, but we were, yeah, and the scissors, for instance, were much lower than we were expected. But when we th thought about it's an instrument that is not present in many in many frames, and it looks like a lot the grass pair, so it makes it uh, a bit difficult. What actually was a surprise for us was the um, the hook. The hook is this this instrument here. You can see in the pictures on the right side. It's used a lot in these type of surgeries. So we thought that's a good one, but um, for one surgery, they used a white one and the other one a black one. And uh, now you can see already the practical problems that can come out that we didn't th thought about. Uh, so we really need to train the system on the white and on the black um, hook in the future. Um, then uh, some practical considerations. Um, how it went in, in practice of, of the hospital. Um, first of all, we have to get approval to use these videos, which took some time and some difficulty. So um, if you're planning to do that, <laughs> uh, take the time. Um, then the annotation time uh, took about three and a half times the length of the video to give an, an impression of, of um, yeah, the time that is needed for, for this research. And we did an analysis of the minimal number of annotated frames that we needed um, in this particular example to reach a recall and a precision that was above 0 0.8. And um, for us, it was uh, we needed a minimal number of 10,000 frames to be annotated and to be trained um, to use to train the system. Well, conclusion, <laughs> very short. This technique is um, suited to automatically recognize the surgical phases from endoscopic videos. Um, uh, but there is still, of course, a lot of work to do. Um, we were uh, very happy with what we did, uh, what we thought, saw, but uh, yeah, also, yeah, we. Uh, the more you know about it, the more you see it what you need to do. Um, well, the next step is, of course, estimate the remaining surgery duration based on this automatic phase recognition to be able to use this information um, in the operating room. Uh, we worked on that, but we didn't publish it yet. Um, and the next point is to assess the required accuracy of this estimation to be usable in the OR. And that is actually a... Um, quite difficult question um, to be answered because, yeah, the operating room is such a complex environment that, um, that uh, we really need to think about how, uh, how we could assess this. Um, well, that's it for now. Thank you very much for your attention. And um, yeah, I'll look at the questions. Eh? <laughs> Thank you very much. Very interesting. Uh, showcase of what you can do also um, because this is a totally different application than we saw before so that's, that's always interesting to see there was one question about the uh, training and validation sets that we used uh, the uh, Suniti was 
questioning whether it's not a rather small data sets, 26 videos and nine videos only, um, and asked if you could comment on that. There is already from uh, Janis a, a extensive answer in the chat also, but he said that you might also have some um, yeah. Yeah, feedback on this. To read and listen at the same time, which is uh, quite tough. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, it's quite a difficult question. But it's good enough. I think that's in the answer. Yeah, in, in my last in one of my last slides, uh, that we look at how many frames did we need. Um, Anneke, your your sound is very bad at this moment. I don't know what happened. But I'm not sure if other. Can you speak again? No, it, no, it's it's very, it's very. There's a kind of noise. Uh, no, maybe. Okay. Is it better now? Still there? Yeah, hello. This is better? Fixed. Okay, I have no idea what it was, but um, here we're back. Okay, the question. Um, yeah, so I think the answer was um, in one of the last slides in the number of frames that we need to annotate it to get a good result, and we define a good result with a recall and a, um, uh, with a result about above 0 0.8 so um that was 10,000 frames so actually if i <laughs> would do this another time i will more look into frames than into videos um yeah to to yeah to balance better the the annotations and the results um between the different phases so yeah that's um uh, yeah, yeah also different than with the um because you're talking about those faces but also the instruments mm -hmm. and for the instruments itself it's of course not it doesn't make that much different whether you have a lot of frames in the same video or uh, a lot of frames over a lot of different videos because the yeah. instrument will be pretty much the same but for the faces it will be more important of course to have more diversity maybe in your videos especially if you want to try to predict the remaining length of a procedure for example yeah absolutely that, that's absolutely true and what i could add on this is also i think in the future we'll think about more which phase is important to recognize to be able to say something about uh, the end time of a surgery because recognizing very well the last phase of closing i mean that's not a very it's a very short phase of two minutes that's not a very important one to 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 recognize if we want to think in 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 uh, pro process optimization. So um, I think we will yeah we will do a, a better selection in prior on what to train and um, and what to test within the surgeries, and then maybe select more and train more specifically. Okay, thank you. Um... There is one question of Isabella Tan. I think we should make that the last question. Uh, what was the motivation to process each frame individually opposed to using a recurrent network? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I don't. I don't. I don't understand the question. Which means, uh, well, that's difficult because she cannot talk. Or yeah, maybe yeah. I also don't exactly understand, Isabel, what you want to, what you to aim at with that question. Frame. But oh, 
Oh, okay, yeah, thanks. Yeah, because the temporal information, using the temporal, <laughs> thank you, Yanis, uh, um, using the temporal information at the time of this research was not ready in, in news, so it was really a practical, um, practical answer. <laughs> Okay, yeah, Isabella says thanks. So the answer is okay. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you very much again for the presentation. Very interesting to see this uh, application. Um, uh, we will move. Uh, I see a lot of applause also coming down here. Um, we'll move to the uh, to the lobby once again uh, to close up and maybe have some extra uh, possibility to do some networking if people want to. Uh, so I will see you all there to finalize this afternoon. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.